oh hallelujah and that's why we're here and we travail in birth again God wake up the church God revive the sleeping sluggard the saint that's become a slow belly that's become dull of hearing the lazy listeners who have put in priority their pleasure above your presence that's why they're filled with excuse and empty of expectation they're filled with their excuses when it comes to being in your presence because Lord they've opted out because they have decided my pleasure is more important than God's presence Lord, we cry out as your people tonight. And you said, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. Mm. Jeremiah 7, 14. Lord, verse 13, prior to verse 14, you said, if you send a pestilence in the earth, then you said, if my people would pray. Then verses 14, you would heal the land. 15 and 16 tells us where that prayer is made at. He said, my name shall be protect, perpetual in this place. You said you'd sanctified your house. So Lord, 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray. Lord, you tell us where they prayed at in your house. You said if a pestilence came in the land when your people gathered in your house to pray, you would heal that land if they'd repent of their sins. So Lord, before we can Reek sinners. The church must repent of her sins. Her sins of apathy, neglect, lethargy, the sin of dullness of hearing, the sin of slothfulness, the sin of excuse, which is often nothing but the skin of excuse covering a lie because how can your people reach a people that's lost if those that are called by your name don't humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways revival's not for the world revival's for the sleeping church every your hearts with your hands and the God who dwells in the heavens limitation 341 Lord we're not here because we need a healing though many of us need a healing we're not here because we have need of you to move this mountain and I know all of us need you to move a mountain simply said Lord we're not here for all those things to be added unto us many skip over the first part of the scripture and just go straight to the results. They want to bypass the principle and the precept and go straight to the promise. But you said in Matthew 6, 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added unto you. 
So Lord, we know the kingdom of God is that that's of the spirit. Because Jesus said in Matthew 12, 28, if I cast out demons by the spirit of God, the kingdom of God's come nigh to you. So Jesus said the kingdom of God coming nigh to us is the Holy Spirit, his divine doings. Evicting devils, yes, but it's his presence. It's his person. It's the Holy Ghost. Lord, when we seek first the kingdom of God, that means we come in here as the early church did and we only pray for one and that's him Holy Ghost Lord that they were together in that one place with one accord in Acts 2 1 and their one accord was the oneness of mind they were there for only one purpose they were crying out for the Holy Ghost to be poured out and so Lord how in the world can we reach a lost world how can we see the church really grow how can we really see lives altered and changed without the Holy Spirit so God forgive us for praying about everything else and asking for all these other things and Lord Jesus you want to do many things you want to add things unto us but Holy Spirit you want us to seek first the kingdom of God oh God change the way we pray when we get up in the morning we should ask for Holy Ghost not something from him but ask for him seeking first the kingdom of God it's not some place somewhere but it's in the spirit it is the spirit it is seeking for the Holy Ghost if ye then be an evil know how to have give rather good gifts unto your children how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him Luke 11 and 13 Holy Ghost we need you and we gather tonight in your house in your altars and we ask for the Holy Ghost Holy Spirit now I'm not just asking for some superficial little feeling to flood my soul no Lord we want the supernatural person cause we can't receive your power apart from your person Jesus said in Acts 1 and 8 ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come on you Holy Ghost you are the person and when we receive you only then can we receive the power that's yours so God we cry out for your spirit come on lay every other prayer aside lay every other thing that you desire aside oh and let the saints be revived how does revival come it ain't crying out for things it's seeking first the kingdom of God and the kingdom of God is him it's his spirit spirit oh hallelujah lord we're not just kneeling we're not just sitting we're not just calling out to you tonight we're not just agreeing for anything tonight no we're agreeing for you to come god you said in matthew 18 and verses 19 oh you said of two or three agree on earth is touching any one thing that they shall ask it shall be given to them by their father which is in heaven and in verses 20 you told us the one thing they agreed on and that they touched it was this, uh, where those same two or three are gathered together in my name, uh, there I'll be in the midst of them. Uh, Lord, the one thing that they agreed on and touched uh, is with that you would be in their midst. Uh, they gathered together in corporate prayer and they prayed for one touch. Uh, they touched the one thing uh, that was most important uh, on the top of the list of their heart and desire. Uh, Lord, it was that you be in their midst. Uh, and you said to those two or three, uh, Lord, that would was, was agreeing oh touching this one thing oh God that you gave them from the Father it was that you be in the midst of those two or three you said I'll be in the midst oh God that means they were touching your person they wanted your presence that's why they gathered that's why two or three gathered in your name they wanted your presence they wanted your spirit they were seeking things above not things of the earth so often prayer is abused and misused it's only used to ask God to do something Lord tonight we're asking for you you're our greatest need you're our greatest reward Abram I am your exceeding great reward oh hallelujah Exodus 15 and 3 Lord you are 25 years later, Abraham now called, that's who he is. 25 years later, he finally figures it out in Genesis 18. Genesis 15, God, you said, I'm your reward. 
25 years later, Genesis 18, now he said in verses three, if I found favor in your sight, don't depart from me. Don't let your presence depart from me. Lord, when Abraham was called Abram, and his faith was elementary, when it was immature, all he wanted to sit and talk with you about was his Isaac. But Lord, 25 years went by. And when he saw you again, he didn't want to talk about Isaac. He wanted to talk about you. Then Lord, you sat down with him and said, now I'm going to visit your wife, Sarah. And according to the time of life, nine months from now, you'll have your Isaac. Lord, ain't that just like us? We like to kneel down and sit down with God and talk about the promise. God, I, when you're going to give me my Isaac, when you're going to do this, when you're going to do that. Oh, hallelujah. But God, if we'd ever sit down and talk to you about you, oh, and call out to you for you, then God, if we'll talk about you when we kneel down, then you'll talk to us about what it is you're wanting to do then you'll talk about the promise oh somebody shout we're here tonight to talk to him about his presence to seek his presence when we do all these other things will be added unto us then the promises will be added unto us we seek you the healer healing will seek us we seek you the deliverer deliverance will seek us we seek you jesus the holy ghost baptizer the one who anoints and the Holy Ghost will find us and anoint us. Hallelujah. We need you. Lord, I thank you. You know what we have need of before we ask, Matthew 6 and 8. But before we ask, if you know what we have need of, well then let us first ask for you. Lord, I need you. Oh God, we need your touch from heaven afresh.